Malaysia expected to enter third wave of COVID-19. New policies plan to address poverty in the country. Good afternoon, thanks for joining us. You're watching Updates at Noon. I'm Jessica Lee. Now, Malaysia recorded its highest ever COVID-19 cases in a day after the Ministry of Health reported 287 cases yesterday. Now, all of the cases were locally transmitted. Now, according to the Health Director General, Tan Sri Dr. Norhisham Abdullah, 20 other cases involved individuals returning from Sabah. Kesemua 287 kes adalah kes penularan di dalam negara. Daripada 287 kes tersebut, sebanyak 20 kes merupakan pengunjung yang pulang daripada Sabah. Ini menjadikan jumlah kes dilaporkan mempunyai sejarah perjalanan ke negeri Sabah sejak 20 September 2020 adalah sebanyak 139 kes. Kedah recorded the highest number of cases followed by Sabah and then Selangor. Two new COVID-19 clusters were identified in Selangor dubbed the Sri Setia Cluster and the Sri Angrik Cluster. Meanwhile, Malaysia is expected to face a third wave of COVID-19 in line with an increasing trend of global cases. Apa yang penting ialah kita masih berada dalam Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan Pemulihan iaitu sehingga 31 Disember. Kita belum kembali kepada keadaan biasa lagi. Jadi sekarang ni kita uh, pastikan uh, uh, kita pastikan uh, untuk uh, bersama uh, bertanggungjawab bersama untuk uh, patuhi uh, SOP SOP yang telah diketengahkan. Uh, Unjuran kita bergantung kepada tindakan Kementerian Kesihatan dengan pelbagai agensi dan juga rakyat Malaysia. Kalau kita sama-sama dapat melaksanakan tindakan masing-masing iaitu patuhi SOP dan Kementerian Kesihatan akan laksanakan iaitu yang pertama tindakan kesihatan awam untuk membendung penularan. Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham added in order to flatten the curve of the expected wave, all sides must play a vital role. Meanwhile, in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19, 16 sanitation operations were conducted involving three red zones, two yellow zones and six green zones across six states. According to a statement by Senior Minister for Security, Deputy Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, five of the operations were conducted in Sabah. Four operations were conducted in Pulau Pinang and Perlis and one in Trungano, Malacca and Sarawak. The COVID-19 public sanitation operations under the Housing and Local Government Ministry since the 30th of March has seen 10,188 operations across 135 zones. Now, due to the rising trend of COVID-19 cases nationwide, face-to-face -face registration in higher education institutes for October intakes are postponed. A statement by the Higher Education Ministry or KPT explained that any registration processes are only allowed to be conducted online. Now, this includes lectures and is effective immediately until further notice. The decision was made after consideration of the concerns voiced out by parents and society. For students who are already on campus and are undergoing academic activities, they are to remain at their respective campuses. The colleges or universities are required to prepare all necessities for their students. In the same notice, KPT said flight companies have also agreed to reschedule flights for students to return to campus until the 31st of December. In another related development, University Technology Mara UITM has postponed all physical or face-to-face -face registration and intake of all students into campuses for the October session. UITM in an official statement announced that the decision followed the suggestion by the Higher Education Ministry, KPT, after assessing the recent COVID-19 trends. 
all students are instructed to continue their studies open and distance learning ODL beginning 12th of October until a later date that will be announced in the future. All activities planned and approved by the Vice Chancellor or Head of Responsibility Centres, PTJ, will also be postponed. The Malaysian Islamic Party, or PAS, has postponed all official events following the increasing number of COVID-19 cases. Its President, Datuk Sri Abdul Hadi Awang, said the decision is in effect immediately until a date that will be announced later. According to Datuk Sri Abdul Hadi, if there are any necessary events, they will be required to follow all standard operating procedures, SOPs, as regulated by authorities. Kami arahkan supaya uh, parti menangguhkan pembangunan umum. Uh, uh, sehinggalah dapat itu ke pencerahan daripada kementerian. Yang kedua, yang diadakan ikut SOP. He said this after delivering an online lecture in Pahang. Now, the government will visit Saudi Arabia to get detailed information on the Hajj pilgrimage of Malaysians for the next season. According to Minister at the Prime Minister's Department of Religion, Datuk Sri Zulkifli Muhammad Al-Bakri, the visit will take place early next year. Pertama sekali, kita akan tengok secara resmi uh, kenyataan daripada Kementerian Haji di sana dan Kerajaan Arab Saudi. Dan saya juga akan uh, cuba dapatkan satu maklumat resmi uh, mungkin bulan 12 ataupun bulan 1 ataupun awal lagi apa-apa untuk saya buat satu kunjungan uh, kepada Arab Saudi khususnya untuk mendapatkan maklumat yang lebih terperinci serta langkah-langkah berkenaan dengan uh, nombor baru dalam pelaksanaan ibadah haji. He said this after an event at University Science Islam Malaysia. The Saudi Arabian government had decided to allow foreign pilgrims to perform Umrah starting the 1st of November next year. Previously, permission to perform Hajj was suspended last March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the government plans to introduce a new policy in the 12th Malaysia Plan to manage the issue of poverty in Malaysia. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department of Economy, Dr. Sri Mustafa Mohammed, said, according to the statistics, the country's poverty rate currently is at 5.6%. Engagement sessions to introduce this new policy have been conducted by the Economic Planning Unit to reduce poverty. Kita, uh amat komited untuk untuk menangani isu kemiskinan uh, kerana kita dah lama berjuang kemiskinan sejak tahun 71 lah berjuang secara secara khusus ya eh, 50 tahun lah lama berperang kemiskinan ni uh, masih lagi menjadi masalah uh, dan kita juga ada miskin bandar bukan uh, mesin dua bandar bandar banyakkan bumi putra orang asli orang India pun ada orang Cina pun ada yang merentas semua he said this at an event in Tapa, Pera. The Prime Minister's Department was also working with the Department of Orang Asli Development, Jakoa, in order to identify methods to improve the quality of education of the group. 37 individuals, including 11 women, were apprehended in a syndicate developing an online gambling mobile application. Now, the raid was conducted in an operation which took place at Jalan Professor Kuke Kim, Pataling Jaya. Pataling Jaya Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Nick Izani Imam Faisal describes the operation as a huge success. All arrested were Malaysians aged between 20 and 30 years old. Jadi untuk bagi kami di Petaling Jaya ini adalah first time yang kita dapat uh, tempat yang actually develop the software for online gaming, uh, online gambling. Yeah. So kita dah semak sikit sebanyak tadi, uh, ada lebih ratus, 500 aplikasi judi online dan uh, tujuh bank uh, yang digunakan sebagai transaksi lah. di mana bank-bank ini adalah berpusat di negara jiran dan customer-customer dia pun berpusat di negara jiran. Early investigations found that the online gambling control center made approximately 40,000 US dollars in profit monthly. The syndicate was believed to be targeting customers from neighboring countries. The case is being investigated under Section 4, Subsection 1C of the Common Gaming Houses Act 1953. 
Now, the coroner's court in Seremban was told that two dogs belonging to the Fire and Rescue Department, or JBPM, failed to unearth any clues during the three-day search mission for Irish-French teenager Nora Ann Quirin, which started on the 5th of August 2019. Now, the 18th witness in the inquest to determine Nora Ann's death, the JBPM tracker dot unit or K9 fire officer from the Jalan Klang Lama station in Kuala Lumpur, Jackson Rinkai Anagawan, 28, said a Labrador breed named Buddy did not give any positive reaction during the search near the Dusun Resort. Testifying before Coroner Maimuna Aid yesterday, he said the first search attempt, which started at 10.30 a.m. on the 5th of August, did not obtain positive leads. Meanwhile, the 19th witness, Fire Officer Ajat Anakmanang, 30, also from the same unit, told the court that Border Collie breed named Murphy also failed to locate Nora Ann's whereabouts during the mission. The inquest proceedings will continue from 19 to the 23rd of October, with witnesses including from the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM and JBPM will be called to testify. Coroner Maimuna said Nora Ann's family will be the focus in November. The 15-year-old teenager went missing on the 4th of August last year, a day after she and her family arrived in Malaysia for a two-week holiday at a resort in Pantai Negeri Sembilan, about 60 kilometers south of Kuala Lumpur. Her body was found on the 13th of August near a stream about 2.5 kilometers from the resort following a massive search conducted by the authorities. Coming up in sport, JDT in seventh heaven after winning Super League title again. And we kick off with local football news. Johor Darul Takzim JDT clinched a Super League title for the seventh consecutive time in swashbuckling style after trouncing Sabah 4-1 at the Sultan Ibrahim Stadium in Skandaputri yesterday. Now with the win, their eighth this season, the Southern Tigers have raked in 26 points, nine more than the nearest challengers, Perak, 17 points in the 12 team standings. Now, JDT still have one more match to go, while Perak have two games in hand. In yesterday's game, JDT got their goals through Diogo Luis Santo, 38th minute, Mohamed Safawi Rasid, 57th and 81st, and Leandro Velaquez, 84th, while Sabah got their consolation goal through Dennis Bushening at the 74th minute. The defeat, however, has put Sabah, who have nine points, in danger of being relegated. In the Sultan Ibrahim Stadium match, JDT, who refused to wait for the final whistle to be crowned as the champions, broke the lull after Santo netted across by Mohamed Afik Faisal before Mohamed Safawi put JDT 2-0 up. Sabah rose to close the gap after Bushening blasted from his left foot to defeat Mama Farizal Malias, but Sabah's advance was halted when the hosts rammed in another two goals in three minutes via Mama Safawi and Velaquez. And that's it from us this afternoon. In our top story, Malaysia expected to enter third wave of COVID-19. Now tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on Saluran Berita RTM on my free views channel 123. Now you can also stream the news by surfing RTM's MyClick. Thank you very much. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV2.